Hey, it's me. I'm here to talk about how to treat unbelievers and my time at college. Now, uh, yeah, my time at college was a real, real mixed bag. And uh, there's something that as Christians we should realise is that when we go to colleges or when we go to universities, we're going to be mostly surrounded by unbelievers. That's the way it is. We're going to be surrounded by atheists, agnostics, people that don't know what to believe, and people of various faiths and religions. We're living in a cosmopolitan world. We're supposed to be living in a world of free speech, but as time goes on, Christians are being hammered more and more and more, you know, so that we're not able to express our beliefs in the workplace or at college and in various places, but that's a different topic for another day. But what I'm talking about now is how to treat unbelievers, and I thought I'd add in a bit of my own life experience from college. Now, I started college when I was 18 years of age, and I quit college when I was 24. So, yeah, I mean, I had my ups and downs at, at, at college. Um, I did a health and social care course, for example. Um, the foundation level one and the intermediate level uh, health and social care course, and I was sitting in a class surrounded by girls. I mean, can you imagine that? I was the only lad in there. I was 18, I was 19 when I went on to the intermediate course. Anyway, um, it was crazy. Uh, I had this girl that, uh, you know, she, she, she was a Scottish girl. You know, the, the, the day she saw me, she says, uh, hey, sexy, you know, I really, really fancy you. You know, she, she she let me know she fancied me, more or less for the first day that we all got together and was all introduced to the classroom and everything. And I didn't know where to put myself. I didn't know what to say. I was never one of these types that took advantage of girls. I was never brought up to be a player or I was never one of these types that knew what to say to girls. OK, it's not that I was shy or that I lacked confidence or anything, because I certainly didn't. I was always my own person, always... I always knew my own mind, I was always myself. Anyway, um, just being surrounded in that classroom, I never really, uh, I always felt a bit uncomfortable. Um, I can't remember the name of the girl that I sat down next to, but um, it was crazy, man. I mean, can you imagine how uncomfortable I felt with all my hormones raging on inside of me? Uh, anyway, this, this Scottish girl really took a fancy to me and she was there. I could tell she was thinking about me. I didn't really know what to say. I never really bothered with her. I had a few mediocre attempts at talking to her, but nothing really happened. You know, and um, I never tried to witness to anyone. I should have done. I should have tried as a Christian to witness to people when I was 18 years old at college, but it would not have been easy. And um, then the year after, it was more the same, and I ended up dropping out of the course because, again, I was just surrounded by girls and it all got too much. I mean, being surrounded by girls in a, in a classroom, be, being the only lad in there would be most teenage lads' idea of a dream come true. It wasn't for me, OK, because uh, I just felt completely out of it and um, it was crazy. <laughs> anyway, then eventually I started... Um, a painting and decorating course, but in, in between time I tried a level three teaching assistant course, which went wrong because I fell out with somebody. I did a load of work experience at a couple of uh, uh, two special needs schools. I'm not going to mention the name of them, but I did. So I gained a load of work experience and everything, and it all just got too much. I ended up quitting it. Okay, I wanted to become a teaching assistant at one point, and that just fell through. Uh, then, eventually, I started a painting and decorating course, and that's when things started to get interesting, okay? <laughs> Who knew I was such a good storyteller? Anyway, I'm trying my best. I'm trying to take it a slow, measured uh, approach to this video so I make as few mistakes as possible. Anyway, yeah, the first year of my painting and decorating course, I, I completed the course from start to finish. I passed with flying colours. Of course I did. And um, there was these two girls, a black lady called Memory, her name was Memory. She was 28 years old at the time. She'll be in her late 30s now if she's still alive, God bless her soul. Um, there was this uh, young girl called Abby. She was 17. I was 23 at the time. So there was a six-year age gap. 
and there was a five year age gap between me and this black girl. Okay. And um, <laughs> again, um, oh yeah, before I get into that, there was a load of other girls as well which fancied me. They got my mobile phone, but this was several years previously. I think I was 18. No, no, no. I was definitely 19 years of age. I remember it. It was when I was on my level two health and social care course. There was a load of girls that got my mobile phone number. They all started to get jealous about me. They all started to uh, fight over me. I got a call out of the blue one day. And it was just chaos, you know. Obviously, being a hormonal teenager, I wanted to have sex with at least one of them, but that never happened. I just got messed about. It was a complete and utter mess. And one of the girls was on the mobile phone crying her, her eyes out down the phone because one of her girlfriends said to her that that uh, she, 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 she was bedding me. It was all a load of lies, you know. I mean, I never met them outside of college, okay? And uh, so that was a crazy experience. I ended up saying, look, if you don't stop calling me, all of you girls, because different girls called me at different times, and it, 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 what amounted to harassment, okay, it was harassment, so I said, I'm going to call the police if you don't stop calling me. So then all that stopped. Anyway, back to when I was 23 at college doing my level one painting and decorating course, I really took a fancy to this girl called Abby. Uh, called Abby. She was really beautiful, but in the end... By the time the course finished, I realised at long last, because I was a bit denser back then than I am now, that she was just a good time girl. And she fancied me. She liked the way I looked physically, I could tell. Because she tried to get my mobile phone number, she showed an interest. I could tell she fancied me. But eventually, when I saw her again a few weeks later down the line, um, I could tell she weren't into me anymore. And I took that really, really personally. Now, you've got to bear something in mind. This is coming from someone who was 23. Never had a girlfriend, never had intercourse with anyone. So there was this girl called Abby. I got really worked up. I was et up about it for the whole year. I was angry, I was frustrated, I was annoyed. I tried to approach her several times and talk to her. It didn't work. And then eventually I gave up on her. I still felt sore about it. I was really annoyed. And there was this black girl called Memory, 28 years of age. Everyone used to comment to her and say, oh, you look so young for your age and all, all this business. And she claimed to be a Christian, and I went round to her flat a couple of times with uh, a couple of college friends of mine. Well, I say friends who were just work colleagues. And she was smoking cannabis sometimes. I gave her money when I shouldn't have done. In fact, I gave money to the students there. I don't know whether I was doing the right thing or the wrong thing, to be honest, but I was very generous. And I was always known as the nice guy that drove the college students to McDonald's and spent time with them. And at various times, they took advantage of me when they shouldn't have done in fact i remember one guy who was working alongside of me once he said to me look peter these guys are taking advantage of you you've got to stop it and i took his advice on board and i thought about it and thought yeah you're right they, these people are taking advantage of me so yeah um <laughs> it's crazy man. when i think about how naive i was even at the age of 23 i thought i was clever when i was 23 and 24 i wasn't man i was naive I was gullible back then, much more so than I am now. And uh, anyway, this black girl memory, um, we sort of had a thing going on. We sort of uh, went out to eat alone together sometimes. I could tell she fancied me physically. But the thing about that is this. When I asked her if she was single, I did. I asked her if she was single. She said, yeah, I'm single. I found out a few months later that she was lying. I heard her mobile phone go off and it was her boyfriend. Okay. So you can't trust people. As Christians, we cannot trust people all the time. We can't. We can't afford to trust people all the time. And I'll, I'll sort of like to see the best in people to the best of my ability back then. I was a little bit more naive back then than I am now. I'm almost 34. On the 30th of April, I'll be 34 years of age. Okay, And I've learned a lot. So yeah, this black girl... Um, I asked her if she wanted to come to church with me because she claimed to be a Christian. I asked her if she was a Christian. And in fact, one or two times she even stood up for me as I was talking about my beliefs. And that's when I tried to share the gospel. I tried to share my Christian faith with my fellow students. And I had mixed results, to say the least, OK? Anyway, nothing really happened between me and memory. When we last saw each other, it was like I was polite to her, but she could tell I wasn't interested in her anymore. I'd just given up. And she sort of stood there, walked off. I never saw her again. We never really swapped mobile phone numbers or anything. 
she kept saying she would go to church. In fact, I remember her talking to her friends and she was saying, you know what, I really should go to church with Peter. But she already had a boyfriend that she was lying about not having a boyfriend. You know, she was one of those types because women, a lot of women tend to be a bit vain or sometimes they're in relationships where they're sort of with someone, but they're sort of not. Sometimes it's a bit complicated. And uh, I, I could tell that she was messing me about. And she, it, anyway, nothing was going to happen between me and her, right? And um, <laughs> it makes me laugh thinking back on all of this, actually, because I have a lot of regrets. Now, the first thing I regret on that painting and decorating course was that I should not have took such an interest in Abby because I was borderline obsessed with her. I, you know, I was borderline with the idea of having sex with her because I'm a red-blooded male at the end of the day. And that's all I was thinking of. I thought, you know, I really, really want to, I want to lose my V-card. That's what I was thinking. I wasn't even thinking about getting married or anything like that. Of course, I'm still a virgin to this day, but that's a different story. But it all led up to where I am now, okay? And um, <laughs> the first mistake I made is that, is that as Christians, we should not become infatuated or obsessed or fancy members of the opposite of sex who are unbelieved and especially people who showed interest in us initially like she did you see that, that, that's what hooked me you see i was hooked like a fish i could tell she fancied me at first she was really really interested she even asked if i wanted to go to a nightclub with her and i said yeah all right we swapped mobile phone numbers i never heard from her. i never got any text from her i think over time as she got to know me and who i actually was as a person she became less and less attracted to me but that wasn't my fault we just weren't compatible she was a good time girl and I was me. We were not compatible, right? And uh, that, that black girl messed me about. Anyway, the second year, I tried to preach about Christ, about my faith, and it didn't end well. I mean, I knew one or two lads there that believed in a higher power, but they didn't believe in Jesus. They sort of listened to me a bit. There was this other guy who I drove home a couple of times. As I said, I was always the nice guy at college. I was always trying to do my best by people. Always, always trying my best. And I even got took advantage of sometimes. But, um, yeah, uh, I, I spoke to him about Jesus, about the church. This guy, he was a little bit overweight. I used to drive him home. And um, I remember once he asked me, uh, he asked do you believe in what goes around comes around? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And then I tried to turn on the conversation to Jesus. And then he said, well, yeah, I am a Christian, he said to me. And then I said, all right, then, well, you know what to do, go to church. And, and that was it. Eventually we stopped uh, seeing each other, right? And then there were others. There was a group of lads that came up to me once and they said, give us one good reason why we should believe in Jesus or believe what's written in the Bible. And I was put on the spot and it wasn't easy because there was like four or five of them on, onto me. I was just on my own. I was the only Christian there. And it's tough for us as Christians in this world, whether it's at college, the workplace, at university, we get picked on. And the moment we start sharing our faith, my advice is this. If we share our faith and they don't want to know and they're just taking the Michael and um, don't shove the gospel down their throats, just back off and say all right if you don't want to know then i respect your beliefs and and uh, i won't bother you again about it but if they do start asking questions always try to have an answer for your beliefs and i did i tried but sometimes the right thing to say slipped my mind sometimes i said the right thing but they still didn't want to know uh they sort of knew i was a christian i saw me as a laid-back nice guy who had this faith that they didn't want anything to do with and you know, I mean, most of them liked me. I fell out with one or two of them along the way. I didn't get along with all of them. I was always one of these types that sort of got along with certain types. I had a little bit of brain, but I didn't get on with everyone. And not everyone got on with me. Um, some people have got the kind of personality where they get on with everyone. They're, they're a real people's person. But I was never a people's person. I was sort of a people's person to a point. But I was always quite self-contained, quite my own person and quite mature for my age, if I'm going to be brutally honest with you. And yeah, I always felt a bit different. I always felt a bit out of it. But you know what? That's not such a bad thing, especially as Christians, because sometimes we're not called to be popular. Sometimes we're not called to always be well liked by everyone. I'm just saying be yourself, whether it's at school, college, university, in the workplace. 
don't fall into the trap of um, going after women who don't have the same beliefs as you, women who lie about being single whilst really they're not. Don't be took for a ride by people who take advantage, unfair advantage of your generous or good nature. And um, just be self-contained, be yourself, get on with what you're supposed to do. Don't make the mistake I made of becoming a little bit obsessed with that girl, Abby, for example, or, or being sh uh, strung along a little bit by that black girl memory. And um, when you're witnessing to people, always stay true to yourself. Always give a reason for the hope that you have in Christ, okay? And we're living in a world that's weighed down with all sorts of things. There's over 6,000 different religions and faiths on the earth right now. Uh, the UK is incredibly secular. Is it, uh, most teenagers and children have got this idea that will be evolved over millions and millions of years. We don't even bother looking into the evidence that goes against that, whether it's scientific, historical or spiritual evidence or whatever evidence that goes against Darwinism. They just believe it and it's because they're not taught anything different. You see, I, I, there's one thing I noticed when I went to college and it's this. Most young people, teenagers and people in their 20s, um, they don't, they, they aren't taught how to have critical thinking, okay? And the sign of intelligence is to be able to weigh up an idea, and even if you don't agree with that idea, but still ponder over it and still think, hmm. You know, whilst people with little brain, the moment they hear an idea, whether it's about uh, Jesus being the Lord and Saviour of mankind, about the Ten Commandments, whatever it might be, they don't want to know. They dismiss it out of hand. They, they just mock you, like in the Proverbs of David and Solomon. Fools will mock guidance and instruction and any Christian who tries to share their faith. You'll get mocked, you'll get spat at, you'll be made fun of. You've got to expect it as a Christian, okay? And, uh, yeah. And um, I'm just trying to think what else to say. Yeah, there was this older guy called John. He was in his early 30s. He was unemployed. I think he was 32 at the time. He must be in his early 40s now. And, um, yeah, he was sort of the funny guy. He was on that course, the level one painting and decorating course of Abby and that black girl, Memory, who was there. Uh, he was always making people laugh all the time. He didn't really want to know about Jesus either. I mean, me and that black girl, Memory, spoke to, to John about uh, our faith. And he says, oh, my God, you're not one of these Jesus types, are you? Well, something like that. Anyway, he says, and then he went on to say, look at all the starving uh, kiddies in the world. As if to say, how can there be a God when there's all this suffering and everything? Anyway, I didn't really get anywhere with him. But who's to say? Because those people that heard me talk about Jesus, those people that heard me talk about the Bible, and those people whom I let know, I the faith in the glorious God Almighty. Perhaps they thought months, years later down the line, you know what, I'm going to look into that. This guy really, really believed in what he was saying. And I think that it wasn't a bad thing that I was sharing my faith. And who knows, maybe one or two people have ended up saved as a result of them just knowing that I was a Christian, that I was so passionate about it, and that I had this concrete belief and unshakable faith in the existence of God and the truth of the Bible and about Jesus, okay? Anyway, I'll end the video here. I hope I haven't made it too long, but I, sh I thought I'd share a bit of my life experience and about how to treat unbelievers, treat them with the utmost respect. Don't shove the gospel down their throat. Don't get angry with them. They're just human, man. None of us are going to be around forever. Some people get terminal diseases. Sometimes people have problems at home. They're just people. The people that make mistakes like everybody else, and we need to love one another. Even the most hideous and arrogant of unbelievers who point the finger and laugh, swear at you, and even beat you up. By the way, I never really got beat up at college. I was too big. Although there was this guy called Tom Marshall. He was six foot three, out of prison. That was on my level two painting and decorating course. He was a big, burly guy. He used to play rugby. Really, really rough and ready character. Yeah, his name was Tom Marshall, and I never really liked him that much. I spoke to him a few times. I never really felt comfortable around him because I could tell that he wasn't my cup of tea. I wasn't scared of him or anything, but most of them were. He was sort of like the one that they gave respect to because he was sort of out of prison. I think he was done for grievous bodily harm, but I don't know what it was. So I think it was something to be hurting somebody physically anyway. Who knows? Maybe he's back in prison now, but... Um, Anyway, that's enough about all of this. I hope and pray that you're all well and uh, like and subscribe. 
and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye and take care.